Hi guys, Angie Bell with my fairy treasures. Okay, let me get my camera straightened out here. Make sure you guys can see everything. Yeah, that looks really good. Okay, you guys, what we're gonna do today is we're gonna we're gonna make a altered um an alt a mixed altered book. And what I did is I used a book from Dollar Tree. You can get a book from Dollar Tree, you can get a book from your thrift store or your own house. And what I did what what I did to prepare this whole thing. I've already gotten started, but I've just got enough done to get started. And then I'll still repeat the same things I've already done to show you guys, but just to get myself a good start because the video can't last forever. Okay, I would be here forever. So what I did to prepare this book is, what did I do? Okay, um, first, I, first thing I did is I went through the book and I started ripping pages. Like this page is ripped here. Also it's stapled, but I'll explain the stapling in a minute. Um, so I went through and I just like, look, that's ripped, ripped. Um, I ripped the edges. Some pages I just ripped out. I ripped out a bunch of pages. Crumble that page up. It's just up to you. You can just do whatever. I ripped that whole page out there. Rip that there. Okay, so you guys get the idea. Rip that there. Rip some pages out and then crumble that page up. Okay, then as you can see, I went through and I got some instant coffee from Dollar Tree. I made it up really strong in a um, measuring cup. I do, I would say a measuring cup so that you can pour it really easily. And I would just open up pages and just pour. I ripped that one too. And just pour, look how cool it looks. Just looks so aged, so beat up, so, you know, old, which is what you want. Don't be precious about it at all. You want it to look really grungy and old. Look how cool, I love that one. Okay, so that's how I prepared the book. And this is the middle part. Okay, so that's how I prepared the book that way. Then I took the whole book, because now it's all wet with the coffee, and I just threw it outside, because it's summer, it's 110 here in Vegas. So I just threw my book outside, and I left it there most of the afternoon, and then this morning I took it, and um, I'm ready to play in it now. Okay, then what I did is I took about maybe, I don't know, six pages and stapled the six pages together. Because right here is where we're gonna do all this work that you guys saw in the picture. We're gonna build up this whole mixed media thing up here in the middle, okay? And so again here, I took a bunch of pages and I stapled them together. Here I actually did more because I needed to stabilize this book because my book started falling apart a little bit. And if your book starts falling apart a little bit, awesome because you want this to look grungy you want to look that book is like a damn mess okay so <laughs> i had to staple this a little bit more but anyway i st staple six seven pages together and that way this stays open and it gives you a nice firm something to work with okay okay then what i did is i took bits and pieces of fabric like this and i just took them to the edges of, pa of the pages just opened up pages and just took a hot glue gun and hot glued them on or you can even staple them. I took some, let me make sure I'm in frame. Okay, I took some fun fur and hot glued that in. I took this little, mus this little um, uh, potato sack pieces, whatever you call them, oh, burlap, there we go. Um, here's some more, like this is a placemat. This is a piece of lace. This is little bits, little, little bits of this and that that I had left over from other projects. A little bit of lace, another piece of lace, a little piece of fabric. You guys get the point now. And you just hot glue them in, okay? More fringe, more of that fun fur. You get that fun fur at Dollar Tree, and a lot of Dollar Trees still have that. Um, this is a little, oh, this is a piece of burlap with a piece of lace. More fun fur, just, and I just hot glue it in, like towards the edge. Just hot glue it in and then a piece of burlap. Okay, so then when you do all that, when you do all that, it looks so cool, as you can see. Look at how the edges all look. Okay, so that's what you want. Okay, so what we're gonna do, okay, what we're gonna do before we, oh, this is the other thing. I opened up the book and inside here, like the edge here is because the book is red the edge was still red and it needed to, I don't know, it, you know, it's a nice little, like this is going to be a nice little display piece um, in my house or you can do this in your craft room. Um, no one's really going to see it, but just for this, 
just for you can cover up the red part, I went and put book pages, music notes, um, puzzle piece paper, all kinds of stuff. Um, some really cool writing in this language. I'm not really sure what this is. But anyway, and did that. And I did that, and I decoupaged that in the inside, too. Here I use a piece of a ticket. I use some um, cheetah print. And just, I just call these my little collage bits. So, use all my little collage bits. So, what I want to do is I want to, on this side, build up all of these little fun pieces of fabric. But before I do that, and before my book gets too big, let's go ahead and cover the back side. And the reason I say cover the back side, even though you're probably going to display this display and how I took the picture is with the book open. But if you want to take it and go like that, you still can. So, let's go ahead and get some... Now, this is what I like to use. You can use decoupage glue. You can use whatever you can you want. I use Elmer's a little bit of water. Okay, it's cheap. I can buy a big gallon of it for nothing, and I like it that way. So, um, let's start out with some music with some book pages. And I like to use a magazine like this. Um, this is just one of those free magazines I get here in Vegas. Everyone has them in their state, I'm sure. And um, I pick them up whenever I'm at the grocery store so that I can use them for um, this, gluing. And then as you do it, you can just fold it back. And when you do your collage bits, at least on the one side, you want to go over all the edges so that you don't have any of that red showing. So fold it right over the edge. But I already folded over all my edges when I did this other side, so I'm not going to have to worry about folding over the edges. But just to let you know. And because I am using glue, um, it kind of seals things. Because I want to actually, I'm going to paint the inside. I'm going to like use some um, sprays on the inside of this book. So I'm going to use those same sprays on this so it all meshes together. So as much as you can, I try not to use the Elmer's on the outside um, because it seals, it puts a sealant on there and then you can't use your sprays as effectively. But you could always go over it with some matte medium and then you'll be able to, it'll make it the, the surface paintable again. And the surface, it, you can probably still paint on top of the glued surface if you put, like if you collage this down and then put glue all over it you could probably still paint on it but it's not as effective but when you leave it with with nothing on top of it it's really good now let's suppose you just get the glue on there or whatever and you you could always put some matte medium on the other thing you can put on here to make it a paintable surface if you get glue on top is um matte uh, acrylic matte coating and this is just like matte medium but it's, a, it's in a spray and it's called clear acrylic matte coating this one's by treehouse you can get any brand um, the other thing you can use is, I think that if you use the matte decoupage, that you can um, easily paint over that. Because I've seen this one girl, I love her work, and I'm watching her show, watching her channel. Um, I have to turn on my computer and see if I can't find her name. I love her. She uses a matte, a matte um, decoupage glue, and she always um, paints right on top of that. So... I am probably going to get some of that too. But this is what I have right now. So, and everybody has some Elmer's or some Eileen's or some school glue, whatever, at their house. And I always try to work with things that I know that everybody has. Or if I have something that's kind of like, you know, a specialty thing or something that, you know, does cost a little bit, I always try to give you an alternative. I never try to act like that's the only thing you can use because no, there's 20 million ways to skin a cat with this whole thing. Okay, this is some scrapbook paper. We'll use that right there. And hopefully I am in frame. I'm pretty sure I am. Okay. And then I always have a baby wipe next to me so I can go like this with my hands. 
and then some type of a card. This is one of those cards to a hotel, to the hotel we stayed at, I think. Okay. Okay, yeah, you guys can see. I am going to use some napkin. Let me show you a little trick with napkin. You remove the, um, you know how there's layers of the napkin and it's hard to always remove it? You take a piece of tape, go like this to the corner, and it lifts up that, this piece. And if you have a second piece, you can do it again. Another trick to um, just kind of like tearing, like if you want a certain part out of this, which I don't really care but it'll make it easier to tear. Just take a paintbrush with some water and just go like that, and then it'll rip just like that. Plus, what's nice about that is if you want a certain part of the tissue, you can get it out really easily without ripping it. Or you can just rip the tissue a lot easier. So I just wet that because I, I want the edges to be not straight. Them to be, there we go, torn. I like to, wear with, I like to work with all torn edges. Now I just told you, for the most part, not to, um, with tissues you can go right over it. And I am sealing this down a little bit because I'm using the glue. But there will be some paint that will go on it. It just won't, it'll just go on it kind of weird, but kind of cool, so just do it. Or go ahead and use the flat Mod Podge or you can use some matte medium over that before you use paint over it. I'm probably not going to because it'll be kind of different. It'll take differently because it has that glue on top and that could be a cool effect too. So try not to always get so strict with all the rules because sometimes when you break the rules, that turns out cool too. That's like another effect. So, so I shouldn't say that. Paint over glue, over, over this uh, Elmer's glue, it's kind of cool too because it resists in some areas, in some areas it takes the paint. It's pretty cool. So anyway. Another thing I wanna do, um, I saw, I should look her name up right now. She um, always likes to um, use some sandpaper and sand her stuff, which I thought was really, really cool. And that adds more texture and also it could take off the shine a little bit. Um, it'll take off the shine and buff it out so you can take the paint easier. So she's the same one that uses the uh, the flat, the matte decoupage. So sorry guys, I got a lot of glue on my hands. I'm trying to get the glue off. Okay. Let's do some more dictionary paper. Just trying to tear off the white parts. Okay. I just love like a torn edge. I think the torn edge looks really good. I was thinking if I should have done this in advance, this part, and just get to the part in the middle that you guys saw in the picture, but I don't know. I feel like this part's important too. In fact, you know what I think I'll do for the sake of time? I'll only do half of the front of this. I won't do the whole thing. And then that way we can get to the middle part, the part you guys saw in the picture. That's really cool. because everybody knows how to decoupage paper in. But it's like a little tutorial, so I do wanna show you the different parts. And if you're gonna do, um, you're gonna use some of this, like uh, the napkin, use it over the book page, because um, if not, it'll just go over the red and the red will come through. Unless you want the red to come through, but I don't want the red to come through, so. 
I'm going to use some music note paper. Use that right there. I'm very, I'm, I'm excited to buy some, um, some uh, matte um, decoupage glue because I'm, I, I, I want to really see if you can, um, if it doesn't seal it and it's a paintable surface, unlike Elmer's glue. So, because she paints right over her, um, the girl I'm talking about, she paints right over her uh, matte decoupage glue. So, and it paints really nice. So, I have a feeling that the matte decoupage acts like the um, matte medium, I think. So, I'm going to be testing that out soon. Her name is Lori Marie Jenkins, the lady I've been talking about. And the thing else that's funny about her, she calls, like what I'm doing right now, I always start out with bits of paper torn. I love doing that. Um, and uh, she calls them her underpants. She says, okay, it's time for underpants. And it's funny because I just call them, I go, okay, it's time for collagey bits. That's what I call them, little collagey bits. But she calls them underpants. So I'm almost about to start calling them underpants because I keep, I keep watching her videos and she keeps calling these underpants. <laughs> it's cute. And it's kind of a neat thing. I never really, I don't know, I always like starting out with stuff like this, um, with underpants. <laughs> Um, I've always done that, and I just, I just always have to start with that, and so does she, which I thought was really cool. And she says it gets her started, and it puts energy into the piece. And I thought, you know what, that is such a good explanation because that is when I really thought about it. I'm like, that's exactly how I feel about all this. It puts the energy in the piece. It also gets me going. But more than more than that, it puts energy in the piece. And it adds, even if you cover it all up, it's you still see bits and pieces, and it adds to the overall piece to have underpants. <laughs> yeah, so you guys check her out, Lori Marie Jen Jenkins. I'll put her below. I just started watching her channel. I uh, love her. Love her channel. Love her style. Her style is so up my alley. Her style is very similar to mine. She likes everything very tattered and, you know, like that. And I love tattered. Tattered rolls. All right, I'm going to take this piece right here. I'm going to put that right here. A napkin. Thanks. And I don't worry when I, you're doing mixed media like this. I don't worry about trying to get a um, no wrinkles. In fact, the wrinkles, of course, add character to your piece, adds texture, which is what you want. So, for the most part. Okay, so I'm going to stop here with this. I'm not going to continue. Let me get my hands wiped off. Um, I'm not going to continue to cross the whole thing, but you can see what we're going to do. And then at the end, when I spray, when I color the piece inside, that's with the sprays, um, I'll come and I'll spray and do the same thing to this part, to the inside, to all the parts that we decoupaged. Okay. Just a second. Let me dry this really quick. is blowing everywhere. Alright. Let me get let me get myself under control here. Just a second. Let me get all my collage bits up before they blow away. Okay.
And there will be a part two of this because there's some dry time that we're going to have to have. And so, yeah, there's definitely going to be um, a part two. So, okay. Oh! All right. So, I, what I want to show you guys before we start this, the center part is just putting in some more of these pieces. Like um, this lace right here. Like just taking a piece of this lace. Let me just make sure everything's put away here. Put my brush away, put this down on the ground somewhere. Okay. So let's take and just go to a page that we have empty. Just take a little bit of hot glue. Haphazardly, just put that down. Use this is one of those uh, spatulas that you get at Dollar Tree, like the cake spatula, the non stick one. And then just lay that down like that. And just go to different pages. Go to so many, every couple of pages. Okay. every couple of pages and just throw some different stuff in like this one I'm gonna throw in this I'm gonna kind of cut it so it looks a little bit not so perfect okay I'm gonna put that in right there I'll put that down in here and I kind of switch up where I put things so that um, so it doesn't look like it's all in the center And I'm gonna put this here so I know where my center is at, so I go back to that. Okay. Um, oh, something else I love doing is taking this fun fur. You guys, they have this fun fur at Dollar Tree. So if you see it, pick it up, pick it up in like all the colors, especially a lot of this beigey one because you'll probably use it the most. Um, because you can use this in so many projects. I use this in flower when I make my flowers, to make my flowers kind of shabby. You can just use it in so many things. Just pick it up, have it in your stash of stuff. Okay, I think this is gonna look fabulous. I love having this stick out of the book. Cool. And then go a few more pages. And this is where I got this from was, Do was Dollar Tree again. What this is is at, at um, Halloween time, they have that netting stuff that you can put, like, just hang from anywhere. I buy this in the beige and the black, you guys. This stuff is fabulous. Use it just like you use cheesecloth. Use it all in your mixed media to give texture. I absolutely love it. This stuff is the bomb. Just hot glue this in. Go to another couple of pages. Then I took her some um, burlap. Okay. And when I do the burlap, I kind of just like get it stringy. Take some pieces out and get it really stringy. And put that in right there. Let's just make sure there's some more strings. In fact, let's do something like this. Let's layer some lace and some burlap. Now, Here's the thing you can do. You can layer both of these. Let's layer them like this. And then you can staple them together with your stapler. You could even hot glue them, but it's just really quick to staple it. You can even staple it into your book. You don't have to only hot glue. But I stapled those two pieces together and then hot glued them in. Like I said, you could just hot glue the whole thing. You can hot glue them together and then hot glue them into the book. I just wanted to add that staple. You guys are like, okay, Angela, add the staple then. Um, you can take a little piece of fabric like this. That was weird. My camera turned off. Um, and that hasn't happened for a long time to me. I had to start my video all over again. So that's the other thing I'm checking for is make sure my damn camera don't turn off. Or my phone okay so you just that's all you're doing taking um, every three or two or three four pages 
and doing something cool to it. Throwing some lace in there, throwing something. Oh, this stuff is cool. This is um, some little tool stuff that I have. And I'm gonna mix that with some burlap and just kind of like put this together. Just a second. I'm gonna cut that burlap, this tool down. So this could be kind of cool. I'm gonna staple that together really quick and then just put that in. It will look a little strange to you while you're doing it, but when you're done, see, then you have all this cool fringy stuff hanging out. Now on that same page, let's do some more of this fun fur. And this is gonna be the last page of this. I'm not gonna finish doing this. I'll finish this off camera. Yeah, that'll be good. So let's get some pieces about that size. You can get so many of your supplies, you guys, at Dollar Tree. It's like the, I call it one of the best craft stores ever. Just the whole damn store. I get so much stuff for my projects from Dollar Tree. I mean, look, they have fun for there, you guys. This stuff is expensive. Like, it's like six or seven dollars at Hobby Lobby or Michael's. I'm going to use the coupon, but you're still paying like three bucks. You guys, I have, I have like, I bought, I just bought like twenty, twenty-five dollars worth of this fun fur. I use it so much in all my projects, and I don't ever want to have to buy it again, especially not at three dollars a skein. And that's only because I used a coupon. They charge up up the butt for that and you know what you can't find fun fur just anywhere I don't even think they have it at Michael's I think they only have it at Joann's I don't know I could be wrong okay so this is where we're at now so it's not look so cool you guys look at that that looks so yummy and it just adds to your whole thing okay so I will finish up this side off camera, but let's get to the nitty gritty of the inside, okay? Um, let me put all of my little, just a second you guys, I kind of have to clean up as I go along because, or at least put things away a little bit so I have room for the next step. This is what I do, I keep baggies full of like these, all these little odds and ends and bits. So I never throw all my odds and ends and bits away because I love to scrap with them or not scrap. I love to do mixed media with them. There's always a use for them, especially in mixed media. Okay. Next. Oh, in fact, I'm going to use some of these bits down here on this thing. So, okay. What we need to do for the, this, for this layering texture in here is we need to put text or for the first step is we need to put texture. So this is a placemat. That's really cool. And I'm gonna use this for texture. So we're gonna start layering stuff in here. And I'm gonna hot glue most of it in. Some people worry about hot glue. Hot glue is perfect on things that are porous, like paper. Plastic to plastic, no. But paper to paper or fabric to paper, Things like that easily can be hot glued. So, and they stay really, really well. It doesn't matter what color we use in here. So if you see me using pink, blue, whatever, it doesn't matter. Um, all we're trying to do is get texture. Because we're going to paint, uh, when we're done with this, it's gonna look crazy. Then we're gonna take um, gesso or kills and white it all out and then we're going to use sprays to spray the color we want. So it does not matter the um, what colors you use. All right. Did I use any of this yet? Okay, yeah. All right, here's some more texture. Throw this down for some texture. All 
Look how messy I'm being. You just want to get cool texture down. Oh, and be careful, you guys, because you're dealing with hot glue. And I thought that that wasn't, um, I thought that was down and it wasn't. It had some glue on the side. I almost burnt the hell out of myself. Okay. And I'm moving a lot faster than I normally would because I'm on camera and, you know, can't be here all day. So I'm using two of these um, spatulas, these non-stick spatulas, to kind of hold this stuff down. Okay. What is this stuff called that's made out of the silicone, silicone spatula? Okay, and then we'll use some burlap. Oh, you know what I wish I had? I wish I had, I need to have some um, corrugated cardboard. I don't know why. I'm sure I have some here right in one of my baskets here in my art, in my art studio. Let me just, after I'm done with this, I'll look really quick. Yes, nothing's better than corrugated cardboard for um, texture. I can't believe I don't. I didn't pull that. I pulled everything in advance, but of course I didn't pull the cardboard. Hopefully I find some real quick. Just a second, talk amongst yourselves. Huh, that's strange that I don't have any cardboard. Um, handy. Just a second, you guys. I'm going to go grab some corrugated cardboard. I have some in my craft room. I'm in my art studio right now. So, way back. Okay, hey guys, sorry about that. I'm back. Got some cardboard. And I have to kind of tear it up a little bit to get the corrugation part going. I have a box in here. I couldn't find any. I always have some cardboard, corrugated cardboard around here. I even buy it. I, you know, but you can just take a box. If you start, you know, tearing off that edge, then you'll have some corrugated cardboard. So I'm sure everybody knows that. Anyway, all right, so let's get some of it really quickly here and put that in my piece. That's some good texture right there. Like I said, everything's going to look crazy because it's going to be so many textures, so many different colors. But what we do then is everything will be painted white with um, gesso or kills what kills is is um kills um make sure that's glued down is a, a wall primer and it acts just like gesso you guys and you can buy it by the gallon for like 15 dollars a gallon way cheaper than gesso love this stuff so i always buy that I actually think it covers better than gesso does. Okay. 
Just a second, I think I saw. Oh, my husband left the house. I was like, what the heck? I heard a beep like someone locked their car and it was my husband. He's left for a little bit. Anyway, I ran to the store. I'm gonna throw this piece of lace right here. Texture. Okay, be careful that you don't burn yourself. You know, actually, I'm going to put it over that corrugated cardboard. All right. If you have doilies, you can use those. If you have little wedding appliques, like little bits of pieces of stuff that you don't want, not want, that you have extra from other projects. Again, some more corrugated cardboard. So as, what's her name, uh, Lori Marie Jenkins, her channel, like she says, these are all underpants. <laughs> Even stuff that you're just putting in for texture, well, is underpants. Even when you put little different pieces of paper, like I did all the scrapbook pages, pages those are underpants too. I swear I'm going to steal that from her and I'm going to start calling all this underpants. People are going to be like, you've been talking to Lori Marie Jenkins. <laughs> oh, she cracks me up with that. Okay. It's cool when you watch somebody, though, and they are just your style, and you're like, oh, my God, love her. Now, who couldn't do this, you guys? Anybody can do this. And it's fun. It's one of those projects that's going to come out so flipping fabulous, and you don't even have to think. That's why I love collage, because you don't have to. You, 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 you have to think somewhat, you know. But I mean, so much of it is just intuition, you know. Collaging, doing stuff like this is probably one of my favorite things. I mean, I draw and I paint and all that, but those are those are things that take focus and concentration. Like when I draw, oh my gosh, I can do it, and I think I can do it pretty good. But it, you know, it just takes it takes focus. You have to be like, okay, do I have the energy today to draw? I mean, that has, that's how it is for me. Some people can draw all the time, like, but for me, it's like, do I have the energy or the patience to draw today? But I always have the energy and patience to do stuff like this. Always. Also, um, I was watching, like I said, Lord Marie Jenkins, and she makes these altered books. And um, it's kind of similar to the stuff I'm doing right now. But you, you do an entire book of this, like do each, like you glue three or four pages together and then you have a nice base to work off of. And um, she has some really cool techniques. So I'm gonna be doing some altered books. And it's kind of like you're, mix, you're doing mixed media and doing junk journaling all at the same time. So it's right up my alley. So I'll be having videos on that here shortly. But until then, you guys go check her out. I'll put her link below. Like I said, it's Lori Marie Jenkins, so check her out. She's very good. Very good, good mixed media artist. And she's fun to listen to. Really fun to listen to. And I'm jealous. She lives in California, where I want to live. Specifically, Pismo Beach, California is where I want to live. I'll glue together. Yeah, these are. I should have put that there. All right, we'll just put some more here. Okay. I was just in California. Um, when was I there? In Pismo Beach, California, last week. Loved it. It's like a little summer vacation. 
just for a few days. It was very nice. We stay on the beach at a hotel. There's all these uh, beaches on the hotel. Oh, wait. There's all these hotels on the beach. And um, it's really, really nice. It's so relaxing just to, like, open your door and you're right by the beach and you can just listen to the ocean while you're sleeping. It's like I get the best rest there. Um, I love the moisture in the air. I just love being by the beach. I went down to the beach and I... Um, collected a bunch of seaweed people were like what are you gonna do with that seaweed everyone's like are you gonna eat that <laughs> I'm like I might but anyway now I got it because I started gardening and I heard that you can make the best um, you can compost the best soil um, some of the best soil from seaweed so I I um, have a compost pile and um, I make my compost piles in garbage cans, you guys. It's a good way to do it where it's not messy and it's contained. Anyway, so I made a compost pile in one of my garbage cans with a... Uh, you do a layer of, like, brown and a layer of green. So the green would be the, the seaweed and the brown would be, like, leaves. Or if you don't have leaves, you can use pieces of newspaper or cardboard. Um, stuff like that. So it's pretty cool. So I have some seaweed mulch going right now. Really, really cool. I'm just looking to see what other textures I can put on here. I have burlap. I have that. Let's just put some more of this. Make sure I'm still on camera. Yes. Okay, so we've created enough texture here. Almost. Okay, there we go. I got this little piece of cardboard right here. We'll just put it right there. I just had it sitting there. Um, let's add a little bit more cardboard here. I love me some corrugated cardboard. I love to make pockets out of corrugated cardboard and put them in my journals, my junk journals, my art journals. Love the stuff. Okay, so now we got texture going on, right? We could throw a little bit more texture right here. Let's just throw this there. And if it hangs over, even better. Perfect. And we'll let some of that hang over and that even looks good. Okay. In fact, that just gave me an idea. Let's keep going with this for another second with this stuff and let it have it hanging over the book because that's going to be fabulous. So you guys, next year when uh, it's Halloween, make sure you get some of this netting. I get it in black and I also get it in this beige color. Make sure you get some of this because... Um, it's just like cheesecloth, but I think it's better. Look how much more textural it is. And I use cheesecloth too. In fact, I have some cheesecloth over here in my thing. I just haven't gotten to it because I've been using this. Look how cool that is. That's gonna be hanging over. So we want this hanging around all over the whole book. So I'm gonna keep going with this. Love this stuff. I love it. It's funny, like when you first think about starting a project, you're like, oh my God, it's so much work. And then once you start it, don't you are you just like addicted? You're like, oh my god, I love this. That's how I get anyway. Before I started it, I was like, oh my god, I have to get because I have to go. What I like to do is I like to go gather, go in my craft room, grab one of my baskets and go shopping and start looking through all the stuff all my stuff to create and I think that's the best way to do it you guys just grab a basket and start shopping in your own craft room because for one thing you forget about all the crap you have number two you will use all the crap you have 
I really shouldn't be calling our stuff crap because it's really not crap, but you know what I mean. Because we all say we don't use enough of our stuff, but like I said, every time you start a project, grab a So I made sure that I, like I said, I stocked up on this, like, netting stuff. I mean, to buy this for a dollar, you get, like, a whole pack of it. It's, like, awesome. Then it sucks they only have it at Halloween time. But they have it every Halloween. And if you go to, like, um, Halloween stores, they'll charge you, like, 3 or $4 for it. Dollar Tree, it's a buck. As you can see, all the stuff I've used is just stuff you probably already have in your craft room. And if it's not, you don't have it, you have something similar. Almost everybody has some burlap, everybody has um, bits and pieces. You can do bits and pieces of fabric, lace, whatever, to create texture. Whatever you have. You might have some netting left over from something from your kitchen. Use that. Start saving that kind of stuff. And you'll have stuff for free even. Yeah, nothing's better than free. Okay. So now we got a ton of texture all over here, right? I'm going to throw another little piece of cardboard in right here. And maybe I'll throw it here and I'll throw some there. Yeah, that's what I'll do. And like I said, I know it looks like like junk, but you saw you 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 clicked on the video, so you saw how cool it looked on the front of the video, so it's going to be cool. Okay. I shouldn't even say this is my first time doing this, but not this type of work though, so I know it's gonna come out cool. It's kind of like that thin of our style, but doing it inside of a book. Okay, and you guys know I love that thin of our style. I call this, really I call it um, salvaged art is what I like to call it. My salvaged art, because it's all salvaged stuff. Okay, so now let me put all my textural stuff away because I have to get all this put away. I have, I get those um, baskets from Dollar Tree and I have baskets of just stuff like this. And I just keep it all in a basket. This is what, okay, this is the black one, but this is what the netting looks like at Halloween time. You guys recognize that, right? It's called creepy cloth. It comes in the, in the black and then it comes in that beige color I just used. So that's what that looks like. Okay. Isn't that funny? Creepy cloth. Love me some creepy cloth. Okay, let's just double check, make sure we're still going. Yep, we are. That looks cool. I love it. All right, I love it just like that. Love it. Okay, so now let's start adding, um, let's start adding a bunch of textural type of things like, all right. At the end of the season, especially at Christmas time, I got these flowers from Dollar Tree, I, and they were only 50 cents a bushel, and I thought that was a good deal, you guys. I went to Walmart. Walmart had them for, these are them right here. They had these flowers right here, regularly a dollar. They had them for 10 cents. You guys, I picked up an obscene amount. Like, I took them all. 10 cents a bushel, I took them all. 
I even took some of these and put these flowers in. Um, I have some cact some cactus in the backyard in some pots, and then I put the fake flowers among the real cactus. And you guys, it looks real. I that's a real a trick that I learned from a gardener from uh, like a gardener show. And they said add your silk flowers in with real plants. They'll never know because it it's in with the real stuff. So they just they, the eye just assumes. Anyway, I'm going off on another tangent. Anyway. So whenever you see these flowers dirt cheap, even a dollar, a dollar tree is good. Get some. But when they go down to 50 cents or at Walmart, they're 10 cents, pick up a ton. Okay. For projects, especially like this. So I want to, we're going to start doing some, gluing some flowers in. I'm going to glue the flowers in right here. Now. The reason that this is going to glue in and stay in really well is because all of this is porous. We're not doing plastic on plastic or metal on metal. This will glue down perfectly to all this stuff that's porous. So we are good. If I have to, and I'm doing work like this, because I like everything to have instant adhesion so I can just keep going. I don't have to wait for drying time. I, if, I, if I'm doing plastic to plastic or metal to metal in something like this, I will use some of this stuff, this, um, this textural creepy cloth stuff in between. I'll lay that down, then I'll lay the other piece down so that this stuff is in between because it'll glue onto this. If I run into something, I'll explain to what I'm talking about. Because some of you might be like, what the hell are you saying, Angela? <clears throat> Okay, I'm going to lay down another one of these flowers. Now, it looks crazy right now because um, I got all kinds of colors going on. Like I said, we're going for cool texture, cool design. Everything will be gessoed white. And then we'll do sprays all over it. It'll be fabulous. Fabulous. right down here okay and then in between here I want that leaf to come up I think yeah no, maybe not that's fine whatever um, in between here I want to put now this is something else I got from I think it's from Dollar Tree I think I got this from Dollar Tree these berries I got these little small berries and then I got these larger berries and I picked all these up at the end of the season when they were 50 cents okay oh more of the flowers let's put some more right here okay Now, as you can see, you can use anything. It doesn't have to be flowers. I'm going to be using all kinds of bits and stuff in here. You can use, look around your craft room and start collecting things that have some cool texture and just put them in a basket and you can do this. You do not have to use the same exact things that I'm using whatsoever. Okay, I'm going to take these little berries here. Oh. Pop those off. Cut that as much as possible. And then let's stick some texture in here, like right here, okay? So for you guys who like to do this type of work, I guess you guys can start seeing now, like, what I'm doing. Okay. Hot glue that down in there. Okay. These are some other little, well, I don't want to use those. We'll use these. These are some other little pieces I got at Dollar Tree. You guys are going to hear me say Dollar Tree a lot. I love to get a lot of my stuff like this from Dollar Tree. Another great place to get stuff like this is um, uh, garage sales. People, I have bought just like, a garbage bag full of like these like 
silk type of flowers and little bits and pieces like this. People just want to get rid of it. They want it out of there. Okay, these are so cool. You want to talk about that? I got these at a thrift store. Let me show you. A whole bag full of these. I love them. I should, probably should have kept these separate. All right, let's take this out of there. Just a second. Okay, these right here, I got a whole bag full of pine cones and these. Aren't those fabulous? I knew I could use these in projects. I've used them a million times. I have tons of this stuff. So, these I also got in a bag of stuff. It might've been in the same bag. Let's put that like, well, we're gonna build up some flowers for that. Put that right there. More hot glue. <coughs> oh, I never even said where I, where I saw this. I saw this when I'm doing last year and I wanted to do it so bad after I saw it and I've just been, and I'm always doing some project and I'm like, I gotta do that, I gotta do that. And so finally I'm like, today is the day I am doing this. I've been wanting to do it for a long time. Just looking at seeing what I have, you guys, just a second. Let me show you what else I have that's really cool. It's birds from Dollar Tree. Love those birds. I always end up painting them because they don't really, a lot of times don't have the colors I, I want. But in this case, of course I'm gonna paint it because it's gonna be painted white. But I thought this bird like in here would look fabulous. So that's gonna go right in the center right there. How cool does that look among all these flowers? Like I said, you're just looking for texture. So you could glue, you could have way different things than I have. Use those, use what you have. But, but if you want, go buy some flowers at Dollar Tree. At this point, you're only paying a dollar a bushel, so not too bad. To do work like this, I wouldn't pay more than a dollar a bushel. Going. If you have broken pieces of jewelry and stuff like that, that could be really cool too in here. In fact, I was going to grab out my jewelry bits, but I forgot. I still need to grab those. Let's see. We'll see if we need them. I have a lot of stuff. I already pulled a lot of things. Yeah, I see my jewelry bits sitting right there. I might grab those. We'll see. We'll see how, how it is when I'm going along here. Cut this right here. I don't need that. Cut this. Okay, let me hold that down for just a second. And like I said, I know it looks crazy right now. Trust. When I'm saying trust, you guys already saw how it looked in the, um, when you guys saw the little picture of the video, so. <clears throat> and that's what I like about work like this because you can have all this stuff in your craft room, which we all have a ton of this and that, and you can use that it doesn't matter the color. You don't have to like make everything match. 
because you're going to paint it all gesso it all white you could also use just white acrylic paint you don't have to use gesso even or kills you can use white acrylic paint make sure it's flat because if it's flat then you can paint on it you can use the sprays on it okay that looks good all right we can add some more flowers You know those big clear tubs, you guys? I have tubs of flowers like this. I probably, oh my gosh, I don't know how many I bought that day. I, I, I ended up spending like 20 bucks, but they were 10 cents a piece, so it was a lot of flowers. My husband's like, what the hell are you doing? And I'm like, honey, they're 10 cents. He's like, what? He goes, you always get those kind of deals. <laughs> I'm like, I know. Well, I'm always looking for those kind of deals, so. Well, we all are. We're all the same. All of us crafters. I just picked up, um, you guys, I did, uh, uh, Hobby Lobby. You know how they've had the 70% off? They've had that. They've been going on and, on and off with that since the beginning of the year. Well, it was time for the yard, dep the yarn department to clearance out. Oh, my goodness, you guys. They had yarn from 99 cents a skein, which is like a ball to um from 99 cents to um like a dollar 50. and all these skeins of yarn or these balls of yarn were like five six seven eight dollars a skein which means a ball of yarn um oh my god you guys i went insane my whole room here in my in my art room um that's my art room is where i do my art where i do all my you know my mixed media then i have a whole wall full of yarn <sighs> One whole side of my studio is all yarn. I am a mess, you guys. I have got to, like, now I have to, like, reorganize my yarn because I have so much yarn, I don't know where to put this new yarn at. So. Oh, my goodness. I got some work to do with this yarn. It's crazy. But. A dollar a skein, a dollar a ball. You guys, that is like Dollar Tree prices. So I was like, um, I need to take advantage of this. Because I knit. Um, I knit. And uh, I don't buy yarn all the time. I just wait till there's good sales like this. And then I stock. And I usually buy, of each color, I'll always buy like 8 to 10 skeins of each color that I buy. Because my projects, I would like to do big projects. Like I just did a boho cardigan. It's like a real slouchy cardigan. It's really easy, you guys, and it's so cool looking. I love it. Um, I like to do projects like that. I like to do ponchos. I like to do ruanas. Those are all like a lot bigger projects, and they require like 800 to 1,000 yards of um, yarn. So, and then I like to always try to maybe make a hat to match and um, like a slouchy hat, a slouchy beanie to match. So, and maybe some fingerless mitts. So I always just have, um, so I just always try to buy a lot of yarn. I always try to buy like eight to 10 skeins of that color that I want. Okay, just a second you guys. I gotta get into my thing cause I need more flowers. Just a second. Okay. All right, let's just keep going. So you guys get the point of what I'm doing, just adding cool stuff. Let's add some more berries. Just a second and cut that off. I know I'm covering up most of the texture that I created, but you guys, the texture shows up in between. And um, it shows up as texture in between. So you need that.
because you're not going to have to cover every little thing. So in between, like little places, stuff will come up or come out, and it's your texture. So. I need to be using this thing and be careful with my damn hands. Okay. And just think, this could all be from a Dollar Tree, Dollar Tree book. <laughs> or even cheaper. If you buy a book from like a garage sale, you're gonna pay more less probably than a dollar. People sell their books for 50 cents, four for a dollar. People get crazy at garage sales, thank God. Because they just want to get rid of the crap. Yeah, I kind of wish I didn't put that flower there. Okay, perfect. Need a bigger flower there. If you cut that little bottom up there, they'll sit flatter. make sure I'm still on camera yeah we're good I have another bird so I'm gonna put another bird in here okay we'll put that there this is so fun you guys I've been wanting to do this forever since last year since I seen it It wasn't just one video. That's why I can't even tell you the video. It was a couple different videos. I saw these altered books and I'm like, uh, those are flipping fabulous. It's an actual book that they altered. I'm like, that, I mean, that is so cool. It's not each individual page. It's like they altered the entire book. <laughs> I'm like, this is so cool. I love this. Oh my God, I'm loving how this is turning out. Okay. I need a bigger flower. Yeah, I do. Now, because I'm using red, which will be one of the hardest color colors to um, cover, you'll probably need a you know two or three coats of gesso on here. We'll see. Maybe just two coats. Probably more than one though. Gesso or like I said, kills, or you can use white acrylic paint. And what's cool with a project like this, you can use the um, bigger flowers. So many times with crafts, you need like the small little flowers. With this, you can use the big flowers. I'm probably using more big flowers than I use small flowers. Let's put that there. Yeah, for sure, cut that little stem off the back. It'll make your it's a lot easier to lay things down. Okay. That's the little piece I'm talking about right there. Make it flat. Okay. That can go right there. smaller one over here and in between here I'm I know I'm adding a lot of flowers I'm going to add tech, some more all these little pine cones and all these little pieces here in just a second I'm going to add another bird all right let's add let's see if we can the big berries if we want to put those in right like right there. Yeah, we do. Are we using the hell out of this hot glue gun or what? Yeah, we are. Okay, hold that down. Okay. 
Let's use some of these now in little places. Little pine cones. Just put those in little places forever. Like I said, you can get little jewelry bits out, which I think I'm going to get out here in just a second. Little jewelry bits. And like I said, you guys don't feel pressure that you have to have flowers. You don't have to have flowers. This is what I chose because I have a whole lot of them because I got such a good deal on them. You can use a ton of different things in your craft room. So I chose to use the flowers as my base, but then I'm throwing all kinds of stuff in. Just a second. Let me grab the jewelry pieces. I have a whole thing of jewelry bits. This has a spray on it. Okay, just a second, you guys. I'm sorry I'm off camera. I'm just looking through my thing of jewelry. Oh, this is this was in my jewelry bits. This little butterfly. We'll add that in somewhere. We'll add it in right there. See what else is in here. We don't have this in here. Okay, I found something kind of cool. Um, I'm trying to think if I want this necklace to kind of like. No. Same for one that's a lay in there, kind of some kind of way. All right, I found another little metal butterfly. We can put that in somewhere. We'll put that in right there. Let's make sure you guys are still. Yep, still there. Okay. got some more of these things that I want to put in. Let's see where we can put them at. Right there is good. Just as I can move around the side here, just getting a lot of hot glue. We're going to go in right there. Ooh. Be careful. Just burnt my damn self. Okay. All right. Okay, I have this big piece here. Let's see if I can't put it somewhere. We're getting kind of full. We're getting to the point where I can probably stop almost. Right, good luck with that, Angela. The word stop. Okay, I have that in right there. Okay, then I have this other bird that I want to add one more bird in. Should have added the bird in already so that I could. I didn't run out of room where to add this bird at. Maybe right here would be a good spot for it. Yeah, I like it there. Okay, let me press this down for a second and get that really glued in there. And I think we're going to stop right here. I think we've got enough stuff in here. 
I'm sure people are saying, uh, yeah, Angela, you got enough stuff in there now. You're good. Calm down. Yeah, I don't need to put those little berries in. Yeah, I think we got enough stuff. We got enough texture. We got enough stuff in here. I think we are so good. Okay, so let's, let me put all this back in here in this basket. Put that down on the ground here. Oh my God, I always say I don't wanna get out too, too much stuff and I always do. Like I have way too much stuff out, like it's insane. Okay. Let me just put some stuff away so that I have some space to work with. Okay. Just a second, please. Card away. Sorry if that's shining in your face. Okay. Now I have some space to work with. Very good. All right, so now all this stuff, I'm just trying to make sure everything's in here good. Nothing's gonna come out when I'm doing my thing. Is this glued on here good? Second, let me get this butterfly on here a little bit better. I had a feeling I didn't put enough glue on there. Okay, so the next step is going to be to use some gesso. Oh my God, this is gonna look so cool. Okay, the next step is digging to use some gesso or some kills. And so I have my kills right here. Okay, do I have some kills in a jar? I thought I had... Just a second guys, I'm looking for the kills I have in a jar. I thought I had some poured out already. Maybe I don't. I thought I did. Okay. Hmm. All right. I'm going to have to open up this thing here. So this is what kills looks like. If you guys can see that in the camera. Kills. It says kills two. And um, it's a um, latex primer sealer all purpose. Stain blocker is what it says on it. And I am, oh my God, am I out? Oh my God. This is dried up and it's done. Okay, I'm hoping that I have some more somewhere else. Just a second, guys. Let me check this out. I can't believe that I let myself get that low on the kills. That's crazy. Let me just make sure I don't have any in a jar somewhere. Okay, remember I said you guys can use acrylic paint? Uh, I may be using acrylic paint. Yep, I sure am. Okay. I always have alternatives, so even for myself, always. You even know when you're going to run out of something or don't have something. Anyway, um, I have... You can just use like the Apple Barrel acrylic paint, but I have a, a bunch of this. I got this for $1.75, it was $6.99. This was uh, that yellow clearance, 75% off at Hobby Lobby. So um, I have a big thing of it. You guys, this is awesome stuff. I love it. Okay, so thank God I have it. Because uh, I'm gonna need a lot. Okay. I'm gonna do you guys, sorry about the noise. That was not me. That was my paint bottle. <laughs> you guys are like, sure. Um, so we're going to brush this white paint all over this. I'm going to do one coat with you guys on here. I'll do another coat off, uh, off camera, and then we'll come back and we'll do the spraying together, okay? Because we'll spray this whole thing. And we're going to use shades of um, brown and... Um, gold some browns and some coppers and colors like that all right here we go make sure we're still on camera yes we are so let's start and this is a big piece so this will 
take a while. And everything doesn't have to be painted perfectly white because when you use your sprays, the sprays are also going to color it. You just want to be, just basically knock the color down. I can't believe I'm out of kills, you guys. And the little bit that was left in there, I thought there was like a little, I thought there was a, a little bit left in there, enough to do this easily. It dried out. Oh my goodness. I've got to, I get my kills at Home Depot, so I got to get to Home Depot and buy some more kills. Thank God I have all this, um, white acrylic paint oh when I was at Hobby Lobby buying all that yarn you guys they have um, if you are just really set on gesso they have the big huge tubs of gesso like huge like I don't know how much that is but <clears throat> probably as big as that paint can is for 10 bucks I almost was gonna buy some but I thought well I have a little bit quite a bit left still probably in my can no I don't so if I would have known that I was completely out like this, I would have bought the damn thing. So anyway, check out your Hobby Lobby. You can get and normally I think it was like forty bucks and it was nine ninety nine. So really good deal. The I think it's the brand, uh, the Fine Touch brand, the brand that this this white paint is. Okay, we'll keep going. You know what I like about me using this paint? I'm using the paint. How many times do you guys have so much paint and you're like, oh my God, I just need to use this paint. <laughs> and we never use all of our paint, you know? I overbuy, I overbuy all the time. But I only overbuy because there's good deals. <laughs> I'm not, I don't buy things at regular price. I just, when I see it as a good deal, then I, then I purchase. I'm getting some of this white paint on my, um, on those laces and that's fine. Cause when you do the sprays, you're going to end up spraying the laces or fabrics or whatever you use that's sticking out and that'll be fine. In fact, it'll look really good. It'll make everything look really cohesive. Bird's tail needs to get in there. Let me turn this around. Hopefully, I'm still in frame when I turned. Yeah, pretty much. This second, if I'm not in frame, I'll be back in frame in a second. <clears throat> And I could change my mind and do shades of like purple and teal, which I think would be gorgeous. I'm thinking about that right now. But I was thinking I kind of want it to look kind of vintagey. Well, you already know what color it is because you saw it on my picture. I don't know yet because I haven't got to that part yet. How much time, how long I've been on here for today. Because what I might do is you guys are seeing how this is going to look. Let me just finish up a little bit more and I'll probably finish this up off camera. Getting this all whited out. We'll say whited out instead of just it out because I'm using white paint instead.
Like I said, if you end up using white paint, just make sure it's a white flat paint. White acrylic flat paint. You know what else I bet you could use? If you have white paint, um, a can of white um, house paint, you could probably use that too. As long as it's flat, you can paint. You know, you could the sprays will take over that. I'm sure. A lot of people have um, a big thing of white acrylic paint, or at least basically white, um, in their garage. Believe me, that's what I would have went to next. That's one of my goals this year is to use what I have. Like instead of running to the store, see what, what see what I can use instead and uh, shop my stash. Stop in my own little, my own craft room, my own art room. I wish if you get an idea, you see somebody doing something like how I'm doing this, don't go run out and buy everything because you know what? That's what's going to make it your own and that's what's going to make it you and it's going to make it different is using your stuff. The main thing you want from each that we need from each other are just inspiration and ideas. And then we can go into our own stash and get what we have that we can use for that project. And like I said, then that makes it your own, your own style, your own thing. It's like your own take because it's the products that you have and your style. <laughs> this is gonna look cool. Excited. Okay. This takes some paint or some gesso, so just know that. Can you see over here? I hope you can't see over there. Let me see if I can see. You can see me now. Okay, you know what? Let me put my book back. Sorry if I've been off of frame at all. Out of frame. Off of frame. Out of frame. There we go. I was turning my book all kind of ways. I forgot that I need to stay in frame, so I can't be turning my book. And paint when whatever, however the flowers are laying, paint it in that direction so that they lay like that and they'll kind of be put in place like that. So you don't have to try to go underneath the flower and paint it white too. So just paint it the way it's laying in place. And the paint's pretty much going to help also glue it into place. So then you don't have to go underneath the, the flower itself and paint that white. My wrist is starting to hurt. It's not from just doing this. I also, uh, I also knit. Knitting, like a like knitting arm or whatever they call it, like an achy knitting arm. It's for real, you guys. Oh my gosh, I get cramps in my in my um, hands from knitting. I know that sounds crazy. It's like okay, you're knitting, fool. It's not like it's that hard. It's well, it's not easy to knit, but I mean, once you get it, it's easy. But. Um, it's not super strenuous, but you're doing the same repetitive motion with your wrist. I was shocked that I actually, my wrist hurt sometimes from that. I'd hear people complain. I'm like, oh my God, shut up. All you're doing is knitting. Oh, well, I understand now. 
So doing this with my wrist right now is like, ow. Okay, on this leaf, just because I'm just going to go underneath that one. Okay. Because of all this red, even though I'm painting it white, I think it would go really well maybe if I went ahead and spray it with the purple and the teal and colors like that. So that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. Because I'm almost done, I'll just finish this on camera so you guys can see it all whited out. Look how cool that looks. Oh my god. I mean, compare it to the other side. Bam, bam. See how it doesn't matter what you use? You're just looking for stuff with cool texture. So, I'll finish this up now, and then you guys will have to tune in to go to part two. Because this has to dry overnight. And actually, it really doesn't have to dry overnight. Like, if, like right now, it's like, I don't know, 5 o'clock in the evening here. So, it's getting late, and i got to make dinner and stuff like that. So, I, don't have, I could just, if it was in the middle of the day, I would just put this outside within 20 minutes. <laughs> 10 minutes, because it's hot as hell here. It's like 110. Um, this would be dry. And we could continue on, but... I gotta go make dinner and see my husband, stuff like that, so. I have to stop arting. I'm excited to start making those um, mixed media slash junk journals. Mixed media slash, well, the lady I was telling you about, she calls them altered books. Even though this is an altered book too, but she does it page by page. I'm excited to do that. I'm going to start that here shortly. I already got my book all set up to do it. Almost done. Let's turn this so that this is in front of me. This looks really cool. Oh, I'm getting paint on my mirror. That's not good. Okay, got this one little red section left. Get your brush and get oh, just get into the little crevices. Just a second. Get this last little flower to do down here. Sorry for getting quiet, you guys. I'm just focusing. 
focusing for a second. I'm trying to get all the little little red places that I see. So I just like go back through and just kind of just well what I'll do is I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm probably gonna give this a second coat of um, paint. So I'm gonna stop trying to get every little thing right now. As I say that and I keep going. Like the Energizer Bunny, I keep going and going and going. Okay, like that one I would do because you can kind of see that right there. Okay. And I will give this, I'm gonna let this dry. I'm going to just dry here, right here in my craft room, and I'll give it a second coat within about an hour or two before I go to bed, and then we'll spray tomorrow. Okay, I think that's it for today. Let me let you see what this looks like. Oh my God, my hand's so painted up. Just a second, guys. Let me just use some baby wipes here. So I can even... I usually have paper towels in my room and I don't have any paper towels in here, which is really weird. I've got to get some paper towels in here. All I have is baby wipes. Sometimes you need something dry for your hands. Okay. So, look at that. Doesn't that look so cool, you guys? I love this. Okay, so the next thing will be is I'll do another coat of white, just so it's even more white. And then um, when you guys come back to part two, um, it'll be all dry and we'll do the spray, okay? And that video won't be very long because I'm just have to spray everything, spray all this, spray the cover, spray the inside. So, um, what was I gonna say? In fact, when you come back, I'll probably have the outside sprayed and the inside cover sprayed, and then we'll just spray this part together so that you guys can see all that on camera, see it done. Um, and I think that's it for now. Yep, that's it for now, you guys. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, like I said, just gather up what you have in your room and use that. Don't go buying everything because you really don't need to. It's just a bunch of junk all put together in this book as your base. And then you white it all out. And then you can spray it and you'll spray it some really cool color. Whatever sprays you have. You don't have to even use sprays. You can use watered out acrylic paint. So you can take watered out acrylic paint and um, make it real soupy like... Um, watercolor and then you just splash it on in spots like three different colors that go together well so um like tomorrow i'll probably do teal purple and i love doing uh brown or i might do teal purple and a little bit of a sagey green and then add a little brown to it so it looks kind of vintagey too so we'll see okay you guys that is it for now if you haven't subscribed to my channel i'd love for you to do so if you give this video a thumbs up that'd be great any comments or questions leave them below come visit me on facebook and instagram and i'll tell you guys next video Bye.